everybody, this is Rick Prokop at Piano Power Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at this tritone, G sharp to D, in the context of 2-5-1 progressions, namely B minor, going to E7, and there's your tritone, and then resolving to A major 7th. We're then going to take the same tritone and surround it with elements that make it look like a B-flat 7th. And here's that tritone again. We started with G-sharp D, and I just inverted it. And now this looks like a B-flat 7th. B-flat D, F, A-flat. It looks like that, but... If I move this up to the first inversion, then second inversion, then third inversion, and place an E underneath, we see that this seeming B flat seventh can really function as an E seventh. So in this case, I have the root, the third. Instead of a B, I have a B flat. So that's the flat fifth. I have the regular 7th of the E 7th, and I have an F, which is the flat 9. The F sharp is the legitimate 9th, and the F is a flat 9. So let's start with the first example, and I just want you to get acclimated to the chords and the notes within the chords. So we're going to start with a B minor 7th, B, D, F sharp, A, and that's our 2 chord. And then the most convenient way to get to the five chord would be to just lower these two notes to E, G sharp. And then we have the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh of E seventh, right? And then from that point, we're just gonna lower the bottom two fingers to A and C sharp. So now we have root, third, fifth, seventh, major seventh, of A major 7th. So practice that a couple of times. B minor 7th, 2 chord, E 7th, 5 chord, A major 7th, 1 chord. One more time. Try it again. B minor 7th, E 7th, and A major 7th. And you see how I'm bouncing on each of these chords. All right? That's to keep my wrist nice and loose so that the fingers can move. All right, so the chords that we're going to use today to accompany the line that I'm going to give you above the chords is a little more complicated. Instead of this B minor 7th, we're going to add on the 9th here. So this is called B minor 9th. And we're going to leave the B out and just play what's called a rootless B minor ninth chord. And for our five chord, E seventh, we're gonna make that a little more complicated. We're just gonna change one note here. Just bringing this A down to the G sharp. Now here's the tritone, right? So if we look at this in terms of E seventh, that's the third and the seventh. This F sharp is the ninth, and the C sharp is the 13th. So this is an E 13th chord and it's rootless again. That sounds really nice. Just to review, an E 13th would be built like this. One, three, five, seven, nine, sharp 11, 13. Okay? So the 13th chord is used by Chopin a lot. A root, the 7th, the 3rd, and the 13th, resolving to the 1 chord. It's a very colorful and bell-like chord. All right, so we have it down here now. And it's all compressed kind of into the left hand. So where do we go from here now? We have the two chord, uh, rootless B minor ninth, going to a rootless E seventh, 
And we're going to resolve this to the third, the fifth, the sixth, and the ninth of A. So all told, we have this, B minor ninth, and then the E thirteenth, and then the A sixth with a major ninth. Some people call it A six nine chord, but it's a stable one chord, okay? So before fashioning some lines over these chords, let's see what scale we should play over this E13. And we know that E7th or E13th is the five chord in the key of A, so the A scale should sound good. And if I begin the A scale on this E, this is called E mixolydian. And when I play E mixolydian against the E 13th, sounds pretty good, except for this A. It clashes with the G sharp down here. So I have to raise it up to an A sharp. So now we have an altered mixolydian scale. everything now sounds good within that scale in relation to the chord. And like we saw in previous lessons, the E major triad sounds good. The F sharp, E, F sharp, these all sound really great. So let's look at a couple of lines that we can play now over these three chords. And our first example sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And the fingering I would use is I'd go up to my fourth finger here. So we go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up to this A sharp. Now, the last part's a little tricky. You want to go down, up, up to the thumb. Try that. Down, up, up. Because this is a soft note, this B. Then down, up. Disconnect these three notes and do a quick down up. When you're going fast, you're not even going to see the little down up on the chords. You're going to just see this. See? But you want to make a disconnection. Whenever you go to more than one note, disconnect to it. Okay? And then make sure all these notes come down at exactly the same time, and you follow through with your wrist so that you're always loose. Okay, and tying in the left hand, we have one and two and three and four and one and. I'm sorry, one, two, and three. So practice that. Two and three and four. Pick up both hands and disconnect to these seven notes. All right, the next one covers quite a lot of ground here. It goes from the D above middle C all the way up two octaves and ends up here. So we have... And if you remember, our left-hand chord was D, F-sharp, A, C-sharp for the B minor ninth. So I'm going to incorporate that in my line. 
And what I'm using here is a D major triad and an E and an A major triad. And how does this A major triad fit into a B minor ninth? Well, if I have the B, the D, the F sharp, the A, that's my B minor seventh, B minor ninth, and then this is the eleventh, so it's B minor eleventh. And what you're doing is just adding extensions onto the chord. And as long as they sound good, it's relevant, it's fine. And then we carry it on. But here, I'm gonna add that raised fourth of the mixolydian. Remember? So we have this. And as I hit the C sharp up here, that's when I change my chord down here. And look what's implied here. There's that, remember I said F sharp works and, and E works and F sharp works and E works. So again, Let's see how we'd play the right hand. First block out D F sharp A with one, two, four, then A C sharp E with one, two, four, and then D F sharp A sharp C sharp with one, two, three, five. So here we go. A major, and then this big chord. And then the ups and downs of playing this are pretty simple. We have one, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then from here, we have down, up, down on the C sharp, and then up to E, G sharp, B. And if it's hard for you, to connect these three notes to the C sharp, disconnect slightly, and then just keep going forward. Say so disconnect, and just keep going forward and get those, get those three notes to sound exactly together. Okay, and with time, two, three, four. Next up, we're going to substitute the V chord, this E 13th, with the tritone substitute of E 7th, which is a B flat 7th. So we're going to have something like this now. We have the B minor 9th, and we're going to have this. And first of all, how does this relate to B flat 7th? So if I put a B flat in the bass, I have the root, the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the ninth. So I have a rootless, what appears to be a rootless B flat ninth. And here's the tritone of the E seventh, right? Of the original E seventh. And I showed you how, at the beginning of this lesson, how we could look at a B-flat 7th in terms of an E 7th. So, just because this looks like a B-flat ninth doesn't mean it is that, and that it's functioning as a B-flat. It's functioning as an E. So this is the 7th of E, the flat 9, the 3rd of E 7th, and this is the augmented 5th. So if I have an E in the bass, under this B flat ninth, right? This is the flat nine, the flat fifth, seventh, flat nine, the third of E, and the augmented fifth. The point being that it looks like a rootless B flat ninth. So if we're going to perceive it that way, then B flat ninth or B flat seventh is the five chord of E flat.
And if I begin the E flat scale on its fifth note, I have B flat mixolydian. And if I play B flat mixolydian against this chord, sounds pretty good. And the only note that sticks out again is the fourth note, because it clashes with the D down here in the bass. So if we raise this this E flat to an E natural, we now have this. And suddenly the whole scale sounds great. And then keep in mind, since we've now altered this scale to include an E natural, Embedded in this scale is the B-flat major triad and a C triad, and these all sound great against the chord and the bass. So let's take a look at a couple of new lines using this new scale. And here's our first example. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So going up on the B minor ninth, we're just going to be accenting all of the triplets. We're going to have one accent, 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 accent. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two. Now look at the scale coming down because I've changed the chord to the seemingly B flat seventh and watch the scale coming down. All triplets. And if I kept going, look, there's the altered mixolydian, right? Except we're gonna end on the C sharp because that's the one chord, the A chord. So you can practice this accenting the uh, first note of, of each triplet. So you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Fingering coming down, you have a three here, two, cross with four, and then end on your thumb on the C-sharp. And with time, we have the following. Two, three, four. All right, next up we have the following. One, two, three, four. Take a look at this one. So we're coming down B minor. Here's the seventh. So here's B minor seventh. And we're going like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and sh shifting immediately to our fourth finger. And then at this point, we're going to play the C triad. And we're going to do that like this. Down, up, up, down, up to the F. So we have down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, off, and down, up. Don't connect to these three notes. And notice when we come down right here, we're playing the C major triad and then the B flat major triad. We're in the space of the B flat 
altered mixolydian scale, which allows us to play C major and B flat. All right, one final go through. Two, three, four. And that should do it for today. I hope to see you next time here at Piano Power Lessons and hope you have a great day.